<laughs> this is my X210 quadcopter. I recently upgraded from 2205 motors to these BR2306S motors. And the old ones were 2600, these new ones are 27. And these are noticeably faster. In fact, it's, it's going a lot faster. I am still using these 30 amp ESCs that came with the kit, and they're doing fine. Even when I land, these motors will be a little bit warm, just like the 20, uh, 2205s. But these ESCs, you put, you put a finger on here and you can't hardly feel any heat at all. So, so far they're doing pretty well. I do need to change the back of this run cam camera because it has this thing on here and with these pins in the way I can't get any more angle than this and it needs a little bit more angle for as fast as these motors are going. Now uh, these motors like I said are a lot faster but is faster always better? Well you'd think yes but sometimes it's, it's not necessarily better. This is the purple uh, 215 that I just recently built and this is using 2205, or 2305 motors. These are 2306 and if I hold these up here you can kind of tell how the 2306 over there on the right is a little bit taller well that's because it's 2306 these are 2305s but these are running at 2400 kV so they're a little bit slower than the old uh, racer stars well unless you believe the bench test ratings which are probably true they're about the same but these motors run at 2400 kV and so when I fly this 2400 kV versus the 2700 kV these actually feel slower in a straightaway run now, I did fly a UTT course recently with this quad, and it was sp spectacular. The uh, corners and the stopping and starting were great with these uh, 2400 kVs. These 2700 kVs, they did okay, but in the end, I actually liked these uh, 2400 motors a little bit better. On this purple 215 quad, besides the 2305 motors, I'm also using Racer Star 40 amp ESCs. And I think these actually may be a little overkill for these motors. They said that these would actually pull up into the 30s, uh, the high 30s. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and get some 40 amp. But I think they're actually a little bit overkill, especially since the 30 amp ones are a little cheaper. But the uh, inside here, I got the Betaflight F3 board. And this is a power distribution board and fly board all in one. And inside this quad, you just have so little room. If you're not using an all-in-one uh, fly board on this, you're not going to get stuff to fit. If you're trying to put a power distribution board in there too, well, good luck to you because there's not much room. In fact, in here I got the fly board, and you can also see right here is the video transmitter. And I didn't have hardly any room for a receiver, so I ended up using this real small Free Sky remote or Free Sky receiver, and it only has one antenna. And the one antenna I actually have it coming down here, and it's ran along the inside of this arm. Now I thought, well, I don't know if this is going to do real well because, you know, it only has one antenna and what the, I didn't know what the range would be. But I flew this at the UTT course and it flew just fine. I didn't have any uh, issues and I've flown it at our practices a couple of times and it's gone just as far as my other quads. And luckily I've never had any fail safes. I do get a look every now and then I'll get a low RSSI, but I haven't actually lost the signal yet. So I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that because... <laughs> There's not a lot of room inside there, and that was the only one I could find that was small enough to fit between the two aluminum uh, side panels there. In this quad, I have this EWRF uh, video transmitter. It looks like this. And the nice thing about this particular one is that it is smart audio compatible. And I figured with as little room as there is in here, there's no way that I'm going to be able to change channels on my video transmitter so I thought well I'm gonna try one that uses smart audio and this one uses smart audio and it works excellent it is powered directly from my battery so I don't have to have any uh, low voltage regulator or anything it, it supports like 6 to 25 volts and the um, it's pretty easy to hook up there's one green wire and that's what you hook up to a transfer on one of your UARTs and it just controls it it's amazing now you do have to run your camera and your video transmitter in through the, the video in and the video out 
on the Betaflight board, but that's not a big deal, and, and the documentation on that is pretty clear too. Inside here, I have that video transmitter, and the antenna is connected directly to it. And then I zip tied the antenna up here to this. I tried to make it. I was going to try to make it go through this and hold it up straight, but that ended up not working very well. The only disadvantage of this, as you can see, that thing has been hit a couple of times. When you crash, this thing tends to get bent down or fall into the props, and then you have chopped up antenna. So, uh, yeah, that's not the best way to do it. But it does work, and for the just for practices and stuff I've been just using this antenna and trying to re-straighten it out it's good enough when I go to a race I'll actually swap it out up here on the front this run cam owl 2 kind of sticks out a little bit and so you don't have good protection for it if I was using a run cam mini or a run cam micro it would actually fit back inside the cage but this has actually turned out to be one of my favorite parts of this quad this thing it works real well during the day and I, I feel like I have zero problems seen yeah, there's a zip tie on here. It's because I stripped out the screws because I didn't use any blue Loctite on it and they wiggled out and so I ended up just zip tying the camera so it holds its angle. Anyway, this thing works really well during the day and also later into the evening when it just starts to get a little bit dark and you know, you think, well, I don't know if I can fly. Well, this thing is still see just fine. In fact, I was out flying it here a couple nights ago and I was flying around and I didn't realize how dark it actually was until I pulled off my goggles and my eyes had to readjust to the darkness. It was pretty awesome. what it looks like while I was flying out here. It is so dark and every time I took my goggles off my eyes had to readjust to the darkness out here because the LCDs were so bright. So will the purple 215 replace the X210? Yeah, probably not. This will still be my go-to quad but if we're gonna fly in a course that has short turns like a UTT course or something else I'll be flying this one first just because of the low-end power that it has and going around curves. Also, I think the tri-blades that it runs helps a lot. This one, you can run tri-blades, but they get a little bit extra hot, and it makes me a little bit worried, so I put the, the two blades back on it. Anyway, if you have any questions about this Purple 215, leave them down in the comments. You'll probably see this show up in a few more videos later. And as always, thanks for watching.